Hey bag makers, today I'm gonna to be talking about the LED light cutting mat. Quilt patterns by Corinne Sovey. Various fabrics that I've added to my stash. I've completed all of my blocks for the Summer Sampler 2020 sew along. I'll be reviewing the book, The Complete Bag Making Master Class. And there's a tutorial for installing piping using two different feet on your machine. And there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. I see Lorraine's watching from California. Um, we have a viewer from Texas. Kathy's watching from New Jersey. So welcome everyone to Social Sunday, whether you're watching us live or watching later on during your week if you're watching the recording. So just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, projects, notions, or fabrics that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. Today's notion of the week is something that I thought was really cool and I can't wait to use it for some of my um, quilt projects. It is from the company Nifty Notions. It is an LED light pad and cutting mat and just um, fair warning, this, this product was actually sent to me by the company. Obviously all opinions uh, during the show are my own opinions. And I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you um, this mat close up. So first off, it doesn't come with a traditional pronged power outlet. So it comes with this cord. It's a USB cord. So you either need to plug it into your computer or you need to use um, a device. Uh, I had this around from another device and this plugs in for me. And then this is actually, I think, from one of my cameras. So I'm using this instead. I'm sure we all have millions of those uh, power devices at home. And so it comes with, it's, first off, it's um, an eight inch by 11 inch surface. It comes with this translucent cutting mat and here's the light pad right underneath. So I'm going to hit the button to turn it on. Um, there we go. Okay, so you just hit the button to turn it on or off and then there's also a dimmer. So if you, if you hold it down, It'll just get dim and then get bright again. There we go. Okay, so I'll make it bright. I'm gonna put the cutting mat on top and I have to admit I was a little nervous when I read that this, uh, you're supposed to use the cutting mat on top of the light, but I did use it a few times before the show with my rotary cutter. So um, I guess I'll just go ahead and, and, and show you on the show. You can press down on it. It's okay to press down on for obviously using the, the rotary cutter to cut fabric. Um, so this would be good for, let me see if I can make it a little brighter. This would be good for a few different craft related items. Perhaps you're transferring designs onto your fabric for hand embroidery. Um, if you do any foundation paper piecing, this is fantastic for that. And this is what I'm, I'm actually working on a project that I'll be doing some foundation paper piecing. So the fabric, in foundation paper piecing is going on the opposite side as the the printed lines because you stitch through the printed lines through the paper and then the fabrics on the other side so lately what I've been doing is I've just been folding on the lines which makes a crease in my fabric so that I know where to stack my fabrics using this light pad is really nifty because I can just go ahead and lay my fabrics out I can see that as you can see on camera you can see the lines through the fabric and then I can just go ahead and align the fabric where I need it to be. And as you can see, you can still th see the lines through multiple layers of fabric. So super excited about this. Um, there's a link in the description if you're interested in finding out more. And I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna unplug this to get it out of the way. But yeah, I was really excited when um, I received this to review. I received it a couple weeks ago and um, definitely going to be adding this uh, to my sewing arsenal and again it's from Nifty Notions. Okay so I have 
purchased a couple of quilt patterns. This particular quilt pattern designer is new to me, but I thought the patterns were awesome. So first off, before I show you my fabric selections and what I've been working on, Danny's gonna put a couple of pictures on the screen really quick. And uh, the pattern company is Curran Savvy. So she has a new two new patterns out. This is called Christmas Cheer, and this one's called Hocus Pocus. So I purchased both of these. I thought the layout and the design and the fact that they were both sampler quilts uh, was what really attracted me to them. I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead really quick and I'm just going to share my fabric choices. So there's actually a sew along going on that just started for Christmas cheer. Um, I printed my PDF pattern out. As you can see, it's, it's quite lengthy and lots of templates. and. Um, I didn't let that scare me away from it though because I look, I flipped through the pattern and it looks fairly easy to sew. So I chose, for quilts I, t I tend to go with solids, I just, I just like, for me personally, that's kind of what catches my eye. So I went with solids that were close to the cover quilt, I kind of swapped a couple of them out. And the first week's um, mission was to make these striped blocks. So I made my five striped blocks. Um, next week's task is for these two star blocks, which can either be applique or foundation paper piece. I really like the pattern because uh, Corinne gives uh, different options like the foundation paper piecing and applique. And I'll just flip to the first page in the pattern. As you can see, all the different types of blocks are broken down and for the sew along, this was our first mission, and then the second week was the star. So it kind of skips around for the so long, but as you can see, uh, it's all certainly mani manageable chunks. And let me share with you the Hocus Pocus quilt. So since it's so close to Halloween, I decided to just jump in with the Christmas quilt. Um, I'm still finalizing my fabric choices for the Hocus Pocus quilt, again, solids. I'm going with the black and white as in the pattern, and I'm still trying to swap in a few colors. So I'm also gonna be using the pink in this one. Um, I ordered a few extra Konas because I wasn't sure. Sometimes I feel like it's easier for me to decide if I have the full pieces uh, with me in the studio rather than the little swatches that come in the Kona color card. So I'm still mulling over the fabric choices for this one, but again, um, Let's see, oh, I thought there would be a little uh, chapter thing at the front, but I guess not. Okay, so um, the patterns are very well written. I read through both of them already. Full size templates, beautifully done. I, this pattern, uh, as a pattern designer, I looked at this pattern, I was like, wow, this so much went into the pattern. Um, I can tell uh, design wise and just uh, thought wise, a lot of time was spent. So um, I was really uh, pleased with both the patterns and I'll sh share my progress on the Christmas cheer quilt. Um, as I go along. So Danny's going to switch back to the front camera and I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments um, Have you made a holiday project before so it might be a quilt it might be a, a bag with some Christmas fabric Let me know in the comments if you've made a, a holiday project before and by holiday I mean it could be any holiday Easter Halloween 4th of July what have you so let me know your answer and I'll be looking forward to checking out some of the answers after the show so um, various fabrics that I've added to my stash this week. Um, I guess it's a, a hodgepodge of different uh, themes for the fabrics that I've added. So Danny's going to switch back over to the overhead camera and I'm going to share some of these fabrics. So first one, unicorn, unicorn fabric. I, I guess I just couldn't resist this one. All of the gold print is actually metallic. Um, I, I don't know, I just really liked this one. I liked the black and white. It is a little bit of a childish print, but uh, never mind that. I still thought it was cool. This next one I found on Etsy. I don't know, sometimes I get on Etsy and I just search around for things. And I found this, even though it's a jersey knit, I purchased it because a little shape flex on the back will take that stretch right out. I thought it would be cute. It's a panel print. I thought it would be cute on the front of the pouch. It's sort of like a cotton candy cat. Um, the next set of fabrics is a bundle of fabrics of different fishing lure. So my brother is an avid fisherman. I picked up these four yards of fish related, fishing related fabrics and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but um, I thought they were pretty nifty. So um, colors are very bright and uh, yeah, I'll just have to think really hard. Maybe a Zeppelin pouch. I'm not sure yet. 
And then the last two I picked up from Hawthorne Supply Company this week. This one is from a fabric line called, let's see, Destinations. Uh, perhaps you've seen at your local quilt shop all of the destination panel prints, different parts of the world, such as London. Um, I think uh, might have done the Grand Canyon designs. Um, I really love a texty like print and this matte print kind of reminded me of that and it comes in different colorways as well. There was a green, I think a blue and kind of a rust colored red. I just picked up this one. And this last one is from a fabric line called Pour Some Sugar On Me. I think that's what it was called. Uh, I thought it was really cool. So there's a print with guitars, one with cassette tapes. I just picked up this particular one. Um, kind of reminded me of graffiti and I liked it a lot. So I bought a few yards of this, not yet sure what I'm going to make with it, but um, I don't know. I just really liked the design and color. And I've linked to all of these fabrics in the description. Danny's going to switch back over to the uh, front camera. And if you're interested in finding out more about any of the fabrics that I shared on tonight's show, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So um, let's see, uh, one more thing that I wanted to share quilt related. I finished the remaining blocks of my Summer Sampler 2020 that I was working on. Danny's going to post a picture on the screen of all 16 of my blocks. I finished the last two this morning. Um, I'm going to sash it kind of like this photograph on Instagram from someone I follow on Instagram. Um, I am going to leave the sashing for a later date. I'm working on that Christmas quilt now and um, I don't have any immediate plans of something to do with that uh, summer sampler quilt so I figure I'll just put the block somewhere safe and then work on the sashing and finish up the quilt at a later date. So the book review for this week is for a book called The Complete Bag Making Masterclass. Uh, my friend Samantha sent me this book which she's written. It just came out. Um, it's a really great book. Uh, so I'm going to share with you some of the pages and the projects in the book on the overhead camera. So um, again, the book is called, uh, Danny's going to switch back over to the overhead. Um, the book's called The Complete Bag Making Masterclass, and there's several projects as well as lots of bag making techniques. So I would say the first half of the book is all bag making techniques. So I'm just going to give you a sample sampling of some of those techniques. So step photographs shown for different things like putting in grommets, discussing different types of purse hardware. Um, super well done and like I said the first half of the book which is almost a hundred pages is dedicated to the, these techniques so super thorough um, and now I'll, I'll show you some of the projects in the book. So the projects start um, different skill levels start with a beginner friendly project which is the piped hobo uh, I wanted to share with you, I don't normally, yeah, I normally cover up um, instructions in the book just out of respect to the authors, but this is kind of a sampling of what you can expect as far as the instructions. Very clear step photos showing assembly and to correspond with different steps. And a lot of really fun and interesting projects in the book. So this is a clutch called the Celebration Clutch. Um, it secures with a magnetic snap and I just really like the cutout handle and the styling of the clutch. Next one is the interchange crossbody backpack. So this converts also to a backpack using the, the, the uh, triangle rings on the bottom of the bag. Next project in the book is the Darling Day Sling and I really love these uh, sort of diagonal vertical zippers on the front of the bag and also the zipper detailing over here. The City Tote is the next one, and this one uses some strap anchors for attaching the handles. Next project is the Crisscross Shoulder Bag. The Trio Pocket Book, and actually I really love this bag. I have some of this fabric uh, in a different colorway in my stash, just haven't used it yet. The Explorer Carry-On is the last project. So this is a, a larger overnight bag. And then all of the pattern pieces are in uh, a folder pocket at the back of the book. So again, the book is called The Complete Bag Making Masterclass. And link is in the description if you're interested in finding out more about this book. Okay, so 
I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what is your proudest finish? So that summer sampler that I just finished up this morning is my most recent proudest finish. Let me know in the comments. Um, perhaps it's something that you've made a few years ago. Perhaps it's a recent finish. Let me know what the proudest thing that you've ever sewn is. Let me know that in the comments right now. So I'd like to invite um, all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let me know in the comments that you're part of the Sew Sweetness squad. We really appreciate you watching the show and also being part of the bag making community. Um, and I'm so happy that you're here. So thank you so much for watching um, and joining us for Social Sunday. So I have a tutorial video for you this week. Um, I wanted to share with you, um, we've talked about piping in the past, but I wanted to share with you a tutorial video for installing piping, attaching piping to your fabric using two different feet on your machine. So. I realize not everyone has a piping foot, but um, I'm going to share how to install piping using the piping foot as well as the regular foot on my machine. So two different feet, um, piping installed um, both ways with those feet. So enjoy. Now go ahead and pull out your cotton cording and I'm using Dritz 5 30 seconds of an inch <laughs> cotton cording. You want to trim both pieces so that they measure exactly 26 and 3 quarters of an inch long. And we're going to be butting these two pieces up against each other. I like to take a little scrap of Pelon ShapeFlex interfacing. And this kind of helps keep the pieces together in sort of a ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the Pelon ShapeFlex um, adhesive side face up. I'm going to butt both of those cotton cording pieces up against each other. And then I'm going to take my iron and starting at one edge, I'm just going to kind of roll the interfacing around the cotton cording, make sure that they're snug up against each other, and then go ahead and fuse that interfacing in place. And you'll be repeating this process for the second piece of cotton cording as well. Now go ahead and take out your bias strips and it's really important that they're cut at a 45 degree angle so that you have some stretch. And I'm going to go ahead and place the fabric so that it is right sides together. This is for the piping on the side panels. We're going to be sewing the short edge, edge using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to press that seam open. And I'm going to be using a product to attach the cotton cording within the fabric so it's nice and snug and we don't need to rely on the pins to hold it in place. So there's a few different items you can use. A Pellon Wonder Web, Pellon Wonder Under, or you can even use a washable glue stick. So the difference between these two products is Pellon Wonder Web is a double-sided fusible web. So this will be inserted in the fabric with the cording and then ironed. Um, I'm going to be using the Wonder Under because it's a paper-backed fusible web. That's the only difference. The Wonder Under has paper. Or you can just apply the washable glue stick. So I'm going to be applying the Wonder Under. And I'm actually going to be using the end of my ironing board. So I've got a little miniature ironing board um, so that I can do this on camera. Actually, let me move it down. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the Wonder Under is the adhesive side, I'm going to iron first on one half of the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm just going to work my way around the entire piece of fabric, fusing this in place. If you're using the Wonder Web, it doesn't have paper on it, so you'll need to sort of apply the cotton cording inside before you fuse it in place. And same thing with the, the glue stick.
And I'm going to trim that wonder under where it meets the other end. And you want to make sure you give this plenty of time to cool. So give it a few minutes, put it to the side for a few minutes, or work on your second piece while you're waiting for it to cool. If it's not completely cool, you'll have trouble pulling off the paper. Okay, so I'm going to let mine cool and then I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you how to apply the cotton cording. Okay, now I'm going to peel back the paper and that will reveal the second side of the adhesive. Okay, again with the end of my ironing board, I'm going to align the fabric and start fusing it in place. So I recommend putting the edge with the interfacing in a different area than where the seam is just to reduce the bulk. Actually, I'm going to flip it like this. And I'm just going to start working my way around with the iron to fuse that in place. And what this product does is, as you can see, it's starting to encase that cotton cording in the fabric, which makes it really handy for attaching this to your side panel pieces and makes it unnecessary to have a piping foot. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to sew both of these in place since there's two side panel pieces. As you're working your way around, just make sure that it's taut so that you're evenly distributing the fabric and you can even put a wonder clip on one end the opposite end of where you're working just to um, keep it in check to make sure you don't have a, a big area of bunched up fabric near the end. So I'm going to be sewing both pieces of piping on camera so the first one I'll be sewing without a piping foot and then the second one I will be sewing with my piping foot just so that you can see the difference both methods work and both are completely fine. I just wanted to give you the option just in case you do have a piping foot for your sewing machine. And as you're working your way around, make sure you push that iron tightly up against the cotton cording. Okay, and you'll be repeating that same process for the second piece of piping with the cotton cording inserted inside. Now we're going to pin the piping to the exterior side panel. So I suggest placing the seam somewhere near the bottom of the bag. So for example, I'm going to place the seam of the piping right over here so it's not conflicting with where the darts are. And the raw edges should be aligned. And just keep working your way around the fabric and pin in place.
Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the second exterior side panel. So I'm going to show you the two different methods for attaching the piping. First, I'll show you how to sew it if you do not have a piping foot. And for the second, I'll share my method for sewing with a piping foot. So again, the first time I sew the piping in place, it will be with no piping foot. Okay, so without a piping foot, we're just going to be sewing around the entire outer edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the second one I'm going to sew using my piping foot and I just wanted to show you what my piping foot looks like. It has a groove which is basically where the piping will run through as it goes through the sewing machine. You'll notice the hole is right next to the groove and so that makes the needle come down snug against the, the piping as you work your way around. They make piping feet with the groove cut out on the left side or on the right side depending on your sewing machine. This is the one that I'm, I'll be using for mine since my machine is straight stitch only. And like I said, it's just going to sit through the groove and I'm going to sew all the way around. Okay, so that tutorial video, in that video I was working on the Rockstar bag, in case you're interested, and the fabric that I was using was designed by Allison Glass and the fabric is called Art Theory. So Danny and I were talking during the tutorial video and Danny let me know that our Facebook live stream, Facebook was encountering some issues at the first five minutes of our stream. So if you're watching this show on Facebook, you likely missed the uh, notion of the week, which was the LED light pad and cutting mat. So if you're interested in seeing that demonstration, check for our live stream of Social Sunday over on our YouTube channel. I apologize for the technical difficulties, um, but check that out because I think it's a really cool project and I was really excited to share it on the show. Um, if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments right now. Um, you can uh, ask either a bag making related question, question about a notion or tool, general sewing question. If possible, Danny requests that you can either type your question in all caps or put a little question mark at the beginning just so he can spot them easily. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and that winner is Mapara Irfan. Uh, so congratulations to you, Mapara. Um, I've contacted you on social media and just waiting to hear back from you so that we can get you set up with your prize. And there will also be another giveaway at the end of tonight's show. So Danny's going to put a few questions on the screen and I'll answer as many questions as I can live. Um, let's see, Rolanda says, what is the width of the bias tape used? Um, so in that particular project, um, trying to think, uh, I should have written it down from the pattern. I believe it was two and a quarter of an inch. If you're adding piping to a bag that doesn't already have the piping in the pattern, um, a quick tip for figuring out uh, the length of the piping that you should use. I've seen a few different methods for attaching, attaching the piping. I have seen 
people use uh, quite a long piece of piping and then when they get to where the piping would be joined just crisscrossing it so the cording would already be installed in the fabric and then you just crisscross usually at the bottom of the bag or you can use a bit of um, I, I keep some extra double fold bias tape handy and um, any the pattern piece that you would like to uh, install the piping into so say for instance this is the piece this is the cut and the fold so it would be a mirror image piece I just tend to run the double fold bias tape along the outer edge of the piece I'd multiply it by two since this is a mirror image cut on the fold piece and then I would add the seam allowance so if it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance I would add an, a half an inch and as you're running this around just keep the edge of the double fold bias tape on the edge and kind of work ease it through the corners so that you can get uh, as close as possible to the number you might need to do some adjustments as you're sewing but Generally, I find that that method using the double fold bias tape gets you really, really close and of course adding your seam allowance. Um, Venus says, haven't seen a piping foot either. What is the first foot you used? It's more narrow than mine. So that first foot um, just came with my sewing machine. Um, I don't think I have enough time to take it off the machine, but it's kind of a scant quarter of an inch foot. I also have a, a standard quarter of an inch foot that I ordered that did not come with my Juki. Um, but that's the foot I use for pretty much all the projects that I'm working on and it actually works out for um, assembling piecing quilts because of that scant, scant quarter of an inch. Wendy says, um, is it a normal stitch length? That's a great question. So um, for attaching the piping to your fabric, you can use the normal stitch length. You can also use a basting stitch, which is, which is a longer stitch, um, either three millimeters or four millimeters and um, it doesn't matter the stitch length but the longer stitches will will go by quicker um, if you're using the piping foot um, i find it really handy um, especially when you start assembling the bag together because um, for instance when you're sewing the side panel to the front and the back of the bag you can just stitch on top of the previous stitches when you attach the piping if you're using the piping foot if you're not using the piping foot, um, you'll just be using the seam allowance and making sure, checking when you're done, just to make sure the, uh, the piping is a tight fit because you don't want um, gaps because it makes the piping look a little bit less professional. Deborah says, which foot did you like better for the piping? I've done it both ways. I feel like the piping foot, just because, as I mentioned just a second ago, because when using the piping foot, I can, um, while assembling the bag, sew directly on top of my previous stitches and be assured of a really tight fit. I do like the piping foot better, but I've only recently started using the piping foot. Um, many years, I just used my regular foot and it served me just fine. Angie says, I'm confused why the first was a quarter of an inch away and the piping foot put the seam right snug to the piping. So that's a great question. So um the the first line of stitching with the regular foot was farther away from the piping because uh without the piping foot to ensure um placement of the stitches for when you're assembling the bag i find in my personal opinion it's better to keep the stitches farther away so that you don't see the stitches in the finished project so if i had used in that first example instead of my regular sewing machine foot if i had used a zipper foot um, to get closer to the stitches and then the seam allowance as directed in the pattern There's a small chance of seeing the stitches in the finished project and I find that using the Either the wonder under or the wonder web that I used in the video by using that product it helps keep the cording tightly fitting inside the fabric uh, Which is will create the piping. I find that using those products and sewing farther away allows you, um, I guess, a little bit of leeway and not having those stitches showing in your finished project. Um, Lisa says, is that the Rockstar bag back on the shelf to your left? Uh, yes, it is. Let me, I don't think I can, I'm sitting in kind of a, a higher up chair and I feel like I'm gonna get myself tangled in my cords, but yes, that is the Rockstar bag. Um, do you have the number of the Juki piping foot? Uh, um, I don't think I have it. Let me see if I have it handy. I tend to keep my wonder clips and the feet that I'm using most often in this little cup I have here. No, I'm sorry, I don't have my piping foot handy. Um, if you are not sure of, of the kind of piping foot, you can feel free to email me and I'll do my best to help you find a, a suitable link for that piping foot. Julie says, it seems like a regular foot, the seam isn't as close to the piping. Did you find that? Um, 
the regular foot yes that was on purpose um, I purposely sewed further away from the the cotton cording um, so that I didn't see the stitches in the the final product Patricia says is there a start date for the rockstar bag so long it's coming up soon Michelle Graham is hosting the rockstar bag so long in the Facebook group um, if you're not already a member of the Facebook group there's a link in the description with the link to the Facebook group so that you can join us um, Michelle usually posts pattern hacks for the sew along and so stay tuned for that because she has a few pattern hacks planned for the rockstar bag including i think she's planning uh, a hack for a drop-in lining debbie says is there a way to add piping after you have made your bag that's a great question i've seen a few people make their bags um, assemble them a little bit different so that they could sort of add like a faux piping and that would involve sewing your pieces uh, wrong sides together first so for instance, the, all the main panel pieces, sewing those wrong sides together in the side panel or whatever's included in the bag. Instead of sewing the fabric's exterior fabric to exterior fabric, um, I've, I've seen people sew the lining fabric to the lining fabric, so a seam would be showing, raw edges would be showing on the outside of the finished bag, and th then covering that with binding, and that kind of creates a faux piping. But as far as completing the entire bag and then adding the piping, um, I'm not sure that could be done, and I'm trying to think through my head and I can't visualize a way that you could do that with the with the completely finished bag at least without ripping out certain parts so that you can sneak some piping in there. Teresa says why not use a zipper foot instead of the regular foot wouldn't it get up against the edge of the piping you sure could use a zipper foot instead to get closer to the piping I just found from past experience uh, when I tried that and maybe it's just me but um, I got really close to the piping but then when I sewed the bag according to the seam allowance my uh, zipper foot seam was closer than sewing the bag together that seam and so I had a lot of stitches showing in the finished bag so um, th certainly the the zipper foot is an option if you're a little bit more proficient than uh, getting your piping sewn in than I am at least. <laughs> um, Alice says where did you get the cording to use for the piping so I really like using Dritz 5 30 seconds of an inch cotton cording uh, we do sell it on our website, uh, sosweetness.com. Um, most big box fabric stores in the U.S. or perhaps your local quilt shop might also stock it. Lauren says, can you use the core cording that you sell on your site for a drawstring? Uh, you sure can. So the core cording that I sell on my website is five millimeters uh, in diameter. Um, it's not piping, it's cording. Uh, the reason that it's different is it doesn't have a, an extra flap sticking out to use it as piping but it would be good for um, either a drawstring or on a on a bag or um, I've seen a lot of people make uh, wristlets with uh, alligator clips or swivel clips on it to attach to either a clutch or parts of a bag so um, it has a few uses I think I've seen people make bracelets and jewelry with it as well um, Gail says pertaining to the different feet does one method of piping look more professional than the other um, I don't think so. I've done it both ways. Uh, lately, I've been enjoying the piping foot, but I've used my regular foot in the past. And as long as you do a quick check before you finish sewing the bag together to make sure you're, um, you've been sewing close enough to the piping to get a really uh, tight finish, um, either foot will work. Shannon says, are we allowed to photocopy the patterns in your book? I don't want to cut the paper since it's double-sided. I, I want to take it to Kinko's, but wanted to make sure it's okay. So you should be able to, uh, now I've not worked at Kinko's and you know sometimes they have uh, certain policies in place, but as long as it's for personal use, you should be able to make uh, copies. If you have any issues, I recall in years past, a couple of people have had issues at Staples or their local copy shop. You can always email me and I'm, I'm happy to give permission if they need to see actual permission from the author uh, to make copies, uh, so that's not a problem. Kathy says, have you made any Christmas themed bags um, I don't think I have many years ago, probably eight or nine years ago, I made Christmas drawstring bags to use for gifts, but as far as handbags or, or pouches or other bags, I haven't made any with specifically Christmas themed fabric, although I have some pretty great Christmas fabric in my stash uh, waiting to be used up, so maybe this year is the year. Um, Nancy says, just wondering, did your seam allowance change with the two different feet? It looked like the piping foot allowed a bigger seam allowance. So it should be both a uh, half inch seam allowance as called for in the pattern. Um, I just sewed them a little bit differently as I mentioned previously. 
with the piping foot I was just sewing on top of the previous stitching and uh, without the piping foot I was using uh, I was following the half inch seam allowance closely as per the pattern. Linda says, Sarah, thanks for coming out with the corner rounding acrylic template. I bought it not thinking I would use it much, but I use it all the time. Great one. I'm so happy it's useful. I know a few people are using it for specific so sweetness patterns like uh, the Amethyst Project Bag, and it's good for, um, I guess, anytime you need to get a rounded edge on something. Um, and you'd like to use your rotor cutter instead of the pattern piece as long as your pattern piece matches up with one of those four corners So I'm so happy that it's useful for you Venus says what is the first foot you use? It seems so narrow compared to my regular foot So that was the foot that came with my Juki. I use the Juki TL 2010Q and I also have the Juki QVP 2200 mini They're virtually the same machine and both of those machines came with that um, as standard in the package Carmen says I have problems with my seams maintain a quarter inch quarter inch, etc. You make it look so easy. How do you do it? So depending on your machine, a lot of machines have certain markings on the bed of the machine, such as a quarter of an inch, uh, five eighths of an inch. You may have noticed on my machine, I have uh, currently I have pink washi tape on the machine marking a half inch seam allowance since my particular machine doesn't have a marking for a half an inch. There are items out there such as magnetic seam guides, which you can um, it's basically a, a small little magnetic block that you can just uh, magnetize to the bed of your machine and that will give you a straight edge for whatever seam allowance that you're looking for. And we also have an acrylic template for positioning uh, your needle or posi positioning your seam allowance. Uh, it's a seam allowance acrylic template and it has a, a cutout in the acrylic for all of the different seam allowances that you might use such as a quarter of an inch, half inch and so on. Jess says, hi Sarah, I was told that serger thread was okay to use in the bobbin of a sewing machine. Any idea if that's a good or secure choice? Um, I've not personally ever used the serger thread. I do know that a lot of serger thread is, um, I don't wanna say lower quality, but because you're purchasing so much thread on a spool for a serger, and generally for a serger you need uh, several cones of thread, usually four, um, usually it's cheaper because it's a little bit lesser of a quality and might have a little bit of extra lint on the thread. So I guess I would say erring on the side of caution, I would, I would avoid using the serger thread and would just use a, a general either all-purpose thread or um, either 100% cotton or polyester thread, um, not on a cone, if that makes sense. Um, Corey says, what needle do you use when making cork wallets? So I pretty much use the same needle for lots of different things, quilt making, bag making. Um, I use a 9014 Microtex needle and two brands that I kind of rotate between are either organ needles or Schmetz needles. And I do have a video on my YouTube channel, a free video, different needles to use when making bags. And uh, you can find that by uh, typing that in the search box on the YouTube channel. Sharon says, if I use faux leather or cork for the satellite bag, should I still use the foam? I'm making one right now in fabric, but I wanted one in faux leather or cork in the future. So I guess it depends on which particular part uh, you're making with the cork or the faux leather. Or if you're making the whole entire exterior of the bag, I would suggest not using interfacing in the side tabs. And also there's a front panel attached to the front pocket. For the front panel, I would skip the interfacing if you're using cork or leather just because that, that strip is really skinny and um, you'll just have an easier time uh, turning and dealing with that pocket if you skip the interfacing on just uh, the front panel, just the front panel part. Tracy says, can you use an adjustable zipper foot to sew the piping to the project? Uh, you sure can. Um, on my Juki, uh, my old zipper foot does uh, kind of slightly adjust. Um, my current zipper foot, which I really, really love, um, on my Juki machine, it's called the hinge zip, uh, sorry, the eighth of an inch um, zip hinge zipper foot. And it basically looks like my regular foot, but just super skinny. I'm gonna have Danny switch over to the overhead camera really quick, just so I can show you the foot. So. My regular foot just looks like this. My regular foot's just a little bit thicker, and uh, this is the eighth of an inch. Uh, this is the foot that I use for my zipper foot. I like it better because it's, uh, my previous foot was just like a little piece of metal sticking out, and this foot, because it looks like the regular foot, um, it just feels more stable going over the fabric and 
feels like it has a little bit better of a grip. Um, I think I purchased this one from Sovac Direct, um, perhaps around $35 uh, US dollars. Um, Sharon says, for the Juki TL machines, where's the eighth of an inch seam allowance mark? So if you had this foot, you could use it. I kind of, um, in years past, have chosen a, a place on my regular foot and just eyeballed it. But again, if you have the eighth of an inch hinge zipper foot, you can just use the side of the, the side edge of the foot. Okay, Danny's calling in on the question, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but we'll be back again uh, next Sunday, and Danny will be joining us on next Sunday's show. So one last thing, I have the giveaway. So I have an extra copy of the Bag Making Masterclass, and I'll be pairing that with a few pieces of Tula Pink homemade fabrics in the uh, mint green colorway. And all you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is to answer my question in the comments wherever you watch the show, either on Facebook or YouTube, Make sure you're logged into your either Facebook or YouTube account first before trying to answer the question. And my question is, what is your claim to fame? So perhaps something that you're known for, something you're known for doing. Let me know in the comments. I was trying to think really hard before the show. I guess besides sewing related things, uh, I, years ago I was on uh, a PBS show called Sew It All TV, non-sewing related. Um, when I was in the middle school years, I was, uh, I'd been taking piano lessons for many years and I used to go to state competitions every year and I used to place pretty well for second or third depending on the year. So um, other than sewing, I guess that's my claim to fame. So thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I hope you had a great time. I sure did. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.